today, I can also announce that the United States has set a new goal of reducing our net greenhouse gas emissions by 26 to 28 percent below 2005 levels by the year 2025. This is an ambitious goal, but it is an achievable goal. Back a groundbreaking agreement today between the United States and China to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The two countries are the top polluters in the world, and they've both committed to combat climate change. The U.S. will cut its emissions by 26 to 28 percent compared to its 2005 levels. They're aiming to do this by 2025. And China is promising to reach its emissions peak by 2030. That means China will continue to increase its emissions until then, but it's the first time ever that China has set a reduction target. So what does this groundbreaking agreement mean for Canada? Now that the biggest polluters are taking action, is it time for Canada to step up? Joining me on the phone from Oshawa, Ontario, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment, Colin Carey. Hi, Rosie. Hi. In Edmonton is the NDP critic for Western Economic Diversification, Linda Duncan. And in Toronto is Liberal Environment critic, John McKay. Good to see you all and, and to Hi, hear you, Great. Colin Carey. Let's start with you, Mr. Carey. Um, the Prime Minister has, has said many times that he wants to see a new international protocol as long as it contains binding targets for all of the world's big emitters uh, and he obviously is talking about the United States China and of course India I wanted to show people what the Prime Minister said about this last week take a look there's a lot of work to be done at the international level to get what all of us want which is a global agreement that will create uh, binding uh, obligations on all major emitters Okay, so if that's the case, and the government has previously said, Colin Kerry, that it's hard to get major emitters like China and the U.S. on board, uh, is China now someone that Canada needs to emulate? Well, I, I think the announcement today is good news, and our position has always been that the largest emitters uh, have to be part of the solution. And uh, let's be clear, the U.S. and China account for nearly 40 percent of global emissions, where Canada is less than 2 percent. We've already taken decisive action with our sector-by-sector -sector regulatory approach to reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions while keeping our economy strong. And uh, I tell you, today we're very proud to say that greenhouse gas emissions in Canada remain well below the 2005 levels, and our per capita emissions have fallen to their lowest levels since uh, tracking began. And we've done this, yeah. Rosie, without that $21 billion carbon tax that can put jobs it, at risk. Except, you know, you say that um, they're the biggest emitters and we are not big emitters it's because we're not a large portion of the population of the world, too, right? I mean, we, we can't account for much because we don't have as large populations as the U.S. and China. Um, and I guess the question is, should we be doing more uh, as the way China has now committed to doing? Well, I think you're aware that uh, we will be getting together for Paris 2015, and uh, we're looking forward uh, to, and we are committed to working with all our international partners to get real action. We can make commitments, but uh, it's really important that those commitments come with real action. Yeah. So, um, you know, these things uh, don't happen overnight. Uh, it's something that we have to work together and work constructively, constructively with all major emitters, and uh, we're, we're not going to presuppose the outcome of those negotiations in 2015 but uh, we're pleased today. Okay, so uh, l let's turn to uh, the opposition uh, MPs if we can. Uh, Linda Duncan, I'll start with you. Uh, what, what do you make of this deal, I guess, between the U.S. and China, and, and does this now force uh, other nations to, to pony up, as it will, were? Well, Rosemary, you're bang on. It's absolutely groundbreaking, and kudos to the United States and China. Shame on Canada for continuing to sit on their hands. Yes, the Prime Minister is right. It takes a lot of work. Uh, work that other people have ev evidently be doing together. So kudos to both of them. Now the ball is in Canada's court because the United States has essentially doubled their commitment for reduction. Mm -hmm. So the Prime Minister has said that we are going to mirror the United States. So they've got a lot of work to do because we're already um, uh, slated to be 100, and I think it's 120 million megatons over uh, what we've committed to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, we need to do more than congratulating uh, China and the United States. It's time to get down to work. It's time to open up the negotiations with the oil and gas industry and the oil sands industry on yeah. how we can move them forward. Well, well, that's a good question, Colin Carey, and I'll get to you in a second, John, John McKay. But if the government has always said it wants to move in lockstep or in conjunction with the U.S., and the U.S. is now saying it's going to reduce emissions by 26 to 28 percent by 2025, uh, what are we doing to get there? 
Well, uh, when it makes sense to lead, uh, we do. And uh, when it's better approach to coordinate, then we take a cooperative approach. And I, I think, what, you know, does that Rosie, mean? what does that mean? Well, it means exactly, and I, you know, I, where Linda says we're sitting on our hands, I can't believe that the NDP would say our government, where we've seen the, uh, uh, our emissions well below the 2005, where the Liberals never got it done, as their old leader said, and where we see per capita emissions at the lowest level ever. All the NDP would like to do is uh, put uh, 275,000 jobs at risk in the oil sands by putting in a, a carbon tax. They have no plan. What we've done is we've taken uh, uh, action that has worked in the electricity sector, for example, we have led yeah. our, our coal regulations. Uh, we're the first major coal user to ban the construction of traditional coal-fired electrical generation. The United States, on the other hand, yeah. is still consulting yeah. I, on those I, regulations. I think, I, think most of the, I think those emission decreases, to be fair, were due to the changes that the Ontario government made and to the drawdown in the manufacturing sector, which also happened in Ontario. So I'm not sure how much yeah. credit well, the federal know, government yeah. can take for that. Well, you know what? We're all working together. It's not just well, uh, one government. It's <laughs> all okay. provinces okay. and individual oh, Canadians that are working on okay. that. Okay. John, John and, McKay. Uh, we will continue with John that. John McKay wants in there. John McKay, go ahead. Well, well, well Rosie, uh, this government is, is brilliant at claiming credit uh, where all the hard work is done by others. Uh, Premier McGuinty was the one that got Ontario off coal, no one else, and it certainly was through no help from the uh, federal government. The, on the transportation sector, all the uh, federal government did was photocopy the American uh, regs and, uh, and made them the same. Big deal. But the one area, the one sector where they could actually have done something, namely in the oil sands, they've let... Uh, they've actually jeopardized uh, Canadians' economic interests uh, and let the uh, the oil sands run wild. So um, it is a game changer today when your two largest emitters and your two largest uh, trading partners uh, say that we are setting these new targets, uh -huh. which are in some respects quite aggressive targets. It, what it uh, exposes is the flaw in the Harper government's policy, which is we harmonize. Well, now the Americans are saying, well, you've got to step up to the plate. Well, the Canadian government has wasted uh, 10 years uh, uh, doing, uh, doing absolutely nothing with our largest emitters. The Chinese government has rightly concluded <laughs> that uh, breathing is not optional for its citizens. And uh, so they are doing this out of uh, their own self-interest. But when we have both our, our two largest trading partners and the two largest emitters yeah. saying, get with the program. Yeah. And I just remind uh, Colin and your, your viewers that um, President Hollande addressed Parliament a couple of weeks ago. Just last and week he was back, none yeah. too subtle <clears throat> about saying to Canada, don't sabotage Paris. Um, and that has been repeated. We are a pariah nation in the in the whole uh, negotiation of um, of climate change commitments. So okay. it's well, a little okay. John okay. Let, let, and, uh, okay. to come let, along can, and yeah. say, if oh, can, look what yeah. we've done when you've done nothing. Okay, well, Colin Carey, yeah, go ahead. If I can remind yes, John, course. it was actually the progressive conservative uh, government that started to get to wean Ontario off coal-fired, and it took McGuinty forever. He ignored it. We're taking a, a leadership role. John was on this program. Tell me one thing you led on, Colin. That he one would thing. put without without consulting with the industry, and we totally reject the Liberals and the ADP would both do you this. Reject they would everything, but you do nothing. A job-killing carbon tax without even okay. consulting Rose with Mary, the can industry. I throw in okay, that and makes we sense do, here. Yeah. Where, where it makes sense, though, Rosie, we do yeah. consult and we work together and we, we cooperate. Okay. But we're not going to. These two parties what don't have understand. You, you have to balance the economy okay. and the environment. Yeah. You just can't okay. go okay. out. I, I, I get that. I get that, Colin Carey. Yeah. But you're saying we'll, we'll do that when that makes sense. But so that means the oil and gas regulations are. Never going to come? No, it's uh, this 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 issue, Rosie, is a continental issue where we have harmonized. We've done this with the transportation sector where we've worked with the Americans. But, but what are you waiting so for? What yeah. are you waiting for, Colin Carroll? We're waiting yeah. to make sure that we have this harmonized with the United States. For example, in my area, where I'm standing right here, the auto sector, yes. it's very important, the transportation sector, we got these regs correct so that we kept jobs in the auto sector. With the oil and gas sector, the oil sands, it's 275,000 jobs yeah. that the Liberals and NDP, they this won't is, even consult. Okay. 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 But the U.S. U.S. is Rose leaving you in their uh, dust the at this continent. stage, Colin Carey. Okay. Uh, across okay. the continent. <laughs> Linda Duncan, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Here's an area where we could harmonize. Go ahead. Both with the United States and China. And if you look at the agreement they've reached, 
where a lot of that harmonization is in on uh, investment and research into renewables and energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. If you look to what the United States has done and what their plan to double the reductions is, major investment in energy efficiency and in, in renewable power. That is where the federal government should be giving support. So if you've got a surplus in your budget, how about bringing back the Eco Energy Home Retrofit? Okay, last word to you, Colin yeah. Carey. Well, uh, as I said, uh, we are, are happy to hear that uh, both uh, the U.S. and China, who account for nearly 40% of global emissions, are, are on side. Canada is less than 2%, and it's always been our long-standing position. 2% and that rising. We have to get everyone yeah, on just, board, and we're going to have you results though, without that, that to irresponsible yeah. policy of the NDP and Liberals, uh, uh, putting uh, in a 21 okay. billon carbon tax. Oh, we're not going to put on, Canadian Colin. jobs on, at risk. Colin. We're going to balance the economy, okay. and it's Colin working. Carey, Colin Carey, I'm going to let John Duncan yeah. get in one, uh, okay. John, John McKay get in one more time, <laughs> <Yeah>. sorry. <laughs> well, well <laughs> to, you to know, harmonization, the harmonization thus far by the federal government has meant nothing. Uh, it means that we don't do anything until somebody else does something. And, and, and that is the uh, core attitude of this government. We are not liberals. going to lead. Yeah, uh, the liberals are didn't not get it done. Okay, we are not going to take finish, any yeah. initiative. We're not going to take any initiative which would uh, move us into the 21st century. So, uh, so the, the richness of the, of the uh, Harper government to say at this point that they are uh, leading on uh, on climate change and there are literally thousands of, of people out there in your in your audience Rosie who are just laughing uh, outrageously at that okay. at that ridiculous They're statement. At the so, okay. so this is a big day. This is a big day and the US and China have uh, so, have come together yeah. and I and the the security blanket of the Harper government has just been ripped to shreds. Okay, so what will that will let Colin Carey respond one more time to that and just if you can Colin Carey give us a sense of even if most uh, environmentalists don't think the oil and gas regulations will actually get us to the Copenhagen targets at this stage, it, it, do we have a timeline at all on these things? I feel like I've been talking about them for a long time and I've yet to see them. Well, you have, and I tell you, it's so important we have to get it right. As I said, we have to balance the economy and the environment. And the irresponsibleness of the NDP and the Liberals is evident in their conversation that we've had today. Okay, but, but, results, but the environment is, are you never going to put the regulations in place? Because if you're looking for no, a balance, absolutely. you would need and those too, we, right? And this is, this is the thing, Rosie, we have a proven record. We have greenhouse gases you are have well below record. the 205 <laughs> levels. Per capita, this is, these are facts. Per capita emissions have fallen to their lowest levels ever. Uh, okay. Under the Liberals, it oh, went up 130 no, million tons. Okay, let's let Colin Carey Paul and Carrie finish, and then we'll wrap this up. That's right. Uh, and under the Liberals, they rose 130 megatons. We're actually at a point now, Rosie, where we have economic growth while greenhouse gases have gone down below 2005 levels. Both of these parties are irresponsible. Right. They, all they want to do, all, their whole plan is a $21 billion carbon tax, which will put 275,000 okay. oil sand jobs yeah. at risk and raise the price of everything. Okay. On that note, we're going to wrap it up. That was vigorous, and I appreciate you all doing that, and it's hard to do it sometimes with someone on the phone, so thanks to you, Colin Carey, for being on the phone, and Linda Duncan, John McKay, for coming into studio. Appreciate it all. Thank you. Hey, Rosie. Thank okay. you. Most welcome. To be continued. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs>